Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. It's uh, Thursday, so it must be YouTube. And uh, here we are. So we're going to animate today. We've been animating over the last couple weeks. I know, I, last couple weeks I did with you, I animated on paper. Today I'm going to animate digitally, still hand-drawn, 2D animation, but I'm going to be working in TV paint. I'm working on a new course for my website. Uh, the course is going to be Acting for Animation. And so I'm doing a series of little animated shots uh, where I cover various aspects of acting. And so over the last several days, I've been working on a shot where I'm talking about phrasing. And what phrasing means is when you have a piece of dialogue, usually that dialogue can be broken up into parts. And each of those parts are a phrase. And usually in animation, you get about a pose to two poses per phrase. And that's what and that's how when you can think about dialogue in that way, it keeps your animation more simple and uh, uh, and easier to watch and more entertaining. So one of the things I've been doing, first of all, I've got to get a little bit of water to hydrate. Gotta stay hydrated. I'm really thirsty. Really thirsty. <laughs> Yeah, a little dehydrated today. Just, just a little. <laughs> just, just a little. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, as usual, I've got my trusty Dusty Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> dusty Dusty. <laughs> i got Dustin with me today, and he's going to be fielding questions, along with Nick, who is uh, my business partner, Nick Birch, and he's in Sarasota, and he's going to be fielding questions as well. Um, so, what I did uh, was I went, to, I wanted to find some dialogue. And I wanted, I wanted actually just to record some dialogue. And so uh, one of the things I did is I went to a website uh, which has, uh, it's a list of the 40, most powerful, the 40 most powerful literary quotes. I just wanted to find really good quotes from literature. And so I found this, this quote from the Time Machine. And it says, uh, and this is from 1895, H.G. Wells. And the quote is, it sounds plausible enough, pl it sounds plausible enough tonight, but wait until tomorrow. Wait for the common sense of the morning. And I really like that line. I like the idea behind it. And, you know, this whole idea of, you know, the night before everything can seem really cool. But then after you sleep on it, maybe it's not so cool. I just, I think it's a nice piece of wisdom. But anyway, I just, I thought it was a nice line. So then I just went ahead and grabbed my phone right here. And most of our phones now have nice digital recorders on them. And so I put on a little bit of a voice and I recorded it. Then I was able to upload it and save it as an MP4 uh, or an MP3. You can save it as an MP3 as a soundbite. And uh, I imported it into TV Paint. This is TV Paint right here. This is the software that I use when I'm animating digitally on my Cintiq. Why don't you jump to the second camera, Dustin, real quick just to show them my setup. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is my setup right here. And uh, so it's a nice big screen. And what's really cool is um, when I'm animating, uh, I can increase the size of the screen like this just through a shortcut hitting the zero. So it's basically like I'm drawing on a sheet of paper at my desk, which is my animation desk, which is right over here. Um, and then I can go back and I can look at the timeline and make adjustments down here. Um, what's very cool is it has, you know, down along this timeline, if you go to the full screen, Dustin, mm -hmm. um, down along the timeline here in the bottom, this is where all my drawings go. And you're going to see in a minute the drawings that I've done. And then up here is my waveform, the sound. So I went and recorded that dialogue, and then I placed, I imported it, and this is what it sounds like. Well, <laughs> it does sound plausible enough tonight, but why don't we wait till tomorrow? Let's wait for the common sense of the morning. Let it play again. Well, <laughs> it does sound plausible enough tonight, but... Why don't we wait till tomorrow? Let's wait for the common sense of the morning. So I'm, I'm, was purpose, I, I purposely kind of took my time with the line and gave it a little bit of weight. I wanted the line to have a little bit of weight. And I've listened to it over and over and over again. And so one of the first things I do uh, in phrasing my, my dialogue and phrasing the, the scene itself is I'll go through and do what's called a scribble pass. And what I'm doing is I'm finding, well, first I'll thumbnail it all out. And thumbnailing is, you know, doing little sketches, 
figuring out the choreography, the posing that I want to do throughout the scene. Now when I listen to this, when I listen to this dialogue, well, it does sound plausible enough tonight, but okay. So there, that's a that's a that's a phrase. That's a statement. It does sound plausible enough tonight, but so that to me, there's a pose in there, or at least moving into a pose. Okay, and then why don't we wait till tomorrow? Why don't we wait till tomorrow? That's another statement. It's another phrase. So there, there's another pose for me. And then lastly, let's wait for the common sense of the morning. There's your last, your last statement. Let's wait for the common sense of the morning. And so for me, there's another third pose there. So there's basically three poses that I'm hitting. Now, you can animate within a pose. But as long as you keep that nice and simple, it's going to keep your animation really watchable. And it'll feel more realistic. You know, in the phrasing of dialogue, it's how we naturally talk. We act naturally think of our dialogue in phrases. And deliver it in that way um, and our body language reflects that so let me show you a very rough scribble test that I did um, and you're gonna you, there's gonna be no dialogue you won't see any mouth shapes and it's gonna be very scribbly but it's just getting the poses the attitude and the movement to match the dialogue this is how I did every scene when I was at Disney for 21 years and what this does, doing it in this way, it enables you to get something down fast and see if it works. And I'll play it for you right now. Well. <laughs> Whoops, hold on. I take it back. There we go. Let me turn this. Let me turn it on. There we go. There's my yeah. scribble. So once again, this is a big scribble test. Here we go. Well, <laughs> it does sound plausible enough tonight, but why don't we wait till tomorrow? Let's wait for the common sense of the morning. I'll play it again. Well, <laughs> it does sound plausible enough tonight, but why don't we wait till tomorrow? Let's wait for the common sense of the morning. So, I've got my starting pose right in here. Well, well <laughs> there's my starting pose. <laughs> and to me, this is all it basically... It does sound plausible enough tonight. I'm working my way over, working within the to get to this pose right here. So it's all working within this general area. And, and, so tonight, but, uh, well, why don't, don't we wait, wait till, till tomorrow. tomorrow? There's my second pose. Uh -oh. Why don't we wait, wait for the common, common sense, sense of the morning? morning? And there's our last pose. So those are our three poses that I was talking about. But like I said, you can animate within the poses and to get from pose to pose. And that's what I've done here. And so I animated this in, in about an hour and a half, two hours. Well, it does sound plausible enough tonight, but why don't we wait till tomorrow? Let's wait for the common sense of the morning. You know, making adjustments here and there, getting the timing right, making sure the poses worked right. And so for a shot like that, that's this long, that would normally take about a week to animate, getting something down in a couple of hours like this really saves a lot of time because I'm going to find out if it works or not. Well, it does sound plausible enough tonight, but why don't we wait till tomorrow? Let's wait for the common sense of the morning. So once I have this working, then the next phase is all I have to do is go in and start tying down the drawings, making them pretty. And then I add the extra drawings where I'm going to have the dialogue. And I've done that here on this, on this layer. So here, the drawings are tied down. And I've got my dialogue in there. You can see, if you look at my timeline, there's still a lot of drawings missing, and that's what we're going to work on today. But I've basically got my phrasing, all the, uh, I've hit all my hard sounds that I need to hit in order to get lip sync. And let me go ahead and play it for you now. Well, <laughs> it does sound plausible enough tonight, but why don't we wait till tomorrow? Let's wait for the common sense of the morning. Let it play again. Well, it does sound plausible enough tonight, but why don't we wait till tomorrow? Let's wait for the common sense of the morning. So you can see, even the, the dialogue is posed out. I'm just hitting in extreme poses where the mouth is open, extreme, closed, M shapes, F shapes, P shapes, whatever it, it, you need to get the, the, the lip sync. And another thing to note um, when I'm animating dialogue, and this is... 
there's a lot of debate. We used to debate this all the time. I'm a firm believer in it. That I hit my dialogue two frames ahead, usually. Especially with this type of dialogue, where it's regular conversational dialogue. I try to hit it two frames ahead. We tend to make our mouth shapes before we make the sound. Okay? And so, and very often, a lot of these shapes that you're seeing, some of them are hitting four frames ahead. But when you watch it, it looks like it's lip synced right on. And so that's it's just a practice. Some guys believe in hitting it right on. Uh, I find that when I do hit it right on, it tends to feel late. The dialogue feels a little bit out of sync. And there's my dog, like <laughs> Achilles. Uh, but let me play it for you again. Well, it does sound plausible enough tonight, but why don't we wait till tomorrow? Let's wait for the common sense of the morning. The other thing, the other key well, to animating dialogue, that, the other key to animating dialogue is to make sure that you don't over animate it. Don't over enunciate everything that you see, okay? Or that you hear. Um, when we talk, our mouths flow from mouth shape to mouth shape. And a lot of sounds will get lost, not lost, but a lot of shapes are not formed as we that you might think you are, are formed. Let me find a, an example. Does sound plausible enough? To plausible enough tonight. There's a lot of there's a lot of hard sounds in there. That does sound plausible enough tonight. Plausible enough tonight. There's a lot in there. But if you if you listen and watch, plausible enough. You see, my mouth only opens and closes a couple of times. So you can see I've simplified it. I made sure I hit the F and tonight, but the, but the plausible, the plausible. Here's P for plausible. And here I'm hitting the B, plausible. I'm hitting that a little bit ahead. Bull, bull. And not bull enough. So that sh mouth shape right there, plausible enough. So that's that's actually taking a couple of words in that mouth shape until we hit. So that's plausible enough. So you can see that the the word plausible enough is kind of the the two words is kind of riding through that one mouth shape. So I can get to that F. I've simplified it down. If I were to over animate all that, it would just become very jittery. The mouth would. So when I play it at speed, well, it does sound plausible enough tonight. But why don't we wait till tomorrow? Now, when you're when you're looking for, it, you can see that there's a little bit of a simplification in there, but it feels nice and fluid. Well, it does sound plausible enough tonight. But why don't we wait till tomorrow? Let's wait for the common sense of the morning. The other important thing is just to make sure you hit your open mouths. Where you know wide enough on accents. Let's wait for the common sense of the morning. Common sense of the morning. Those are the three big open mouths. Well, it does sound plausible enough tonight, but why don't we wait till tomorrow? Let's wait for the common sense of the morning. Okay. So, all of that being said, I hope I've given you a little bit of a lesson in there. <clears throat> I'm going to jump in. And I'm going to start breaking this stuff down. And uh, while I'm doing it, we can do some questions. And mind if I say hello? Yeah, say hi, Dustin. So we got a new camera. We got hi. Dustin. Now Now you guys can see Dustin. So there he is. <laughs> and uh, uh, we've... Uh, We've decided to set up that that camera. We've got another camera here. We're getting we're getting much more uh, like a studio in here. Although my my office has gotten full of you know completely packed full of junk again. Yeah. But uh, but we'll get it all back and uh, uh, organized again. But anyway, let's. Uh, I'm going to jump in, and um. And it was question uh, time. I put in the uh, the duo camera. If that if that's cool with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm going to have some more water. Got to stay hydrated. And um, I'm just going to get in here, and um, <laughs> and you guys can ask questions. There, there's my onion skin. And so here, what I want to do is I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> 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 the very first question. Um, 
Oh, real, real quick, real quick. Okay, you can hear he's going, hey. I'm, I'm going to bring his shoulders up a little bit. Go ahead, Dustin. Sorry. Um, are you are you planning on animating the whiskers later? Yes, I am planning on animating the whiskers later. Good question. Oops, got the wrong pencil. There we go. Have you ever struggled with painting your arm when uh, working uh, tight deadlines? If so, how do you deal with it? I don't. No, I, I've never had any problems with uh, pain in my arms at all. Because you usually animate with the shoulder, right? And that. Yeah, and I, you know, I take I take enough breaks too. Uh, any animation uh, apps for iPad that you would recommend? Um, animation apps? Uh, that I don't. I don't know. I don't know about any animation apps for iPad, unfortunately. And Dustin's going to turn his phone off. Yes, I am. The lip sync. Uh, dialogue early is like a is like moving a puppet. It's a little bit like moving a puppet, exactly. You know, one of the things I try to explain to people when I'm talking about dialogue is don't overthink it. You know, the Muppets are a great example of what you can achieve just with an open mouth and a closed mouth. Um, when you watch the Muppets, um, you really believe that they're talking, and all they are is a open and closed mouth. So, um, you know, if you can hit your accents, your open and close in the right place, you're 90% there. Where, where did you get the inspiration for the character? Um, I don't know. This character, I just, uh, matter of fact, I'm going to switch over here. Let me go to Photoshop and file open... What was that, cat design? It was cat design, right? Uh, yes. It was cat design and cat thumbnail. Yeah, this Mac, cat design. There he is. So this is a design. I, I just threw together a design. Oh, that was, that was cat design right there. There's the thumbnail. Did you, hmm, I think you saved the wrong one. I saved cat design. Yeah, I know, but it's under the thumbnails. You save cat thumbnails for cat. the. There's the, you save that as a, under cat thumbnail. That's okay. What? Either way, yeah, it, it's weird, but it, it, that saved as a thumbnail. But I just sat down. And I just I wanted to do a big fat cat. Uh, that, that's that was that was my inspiration. I just wanted to do a fat cat, and so I sat down. And I did this sketch really quick, and then sat down and did some thumbnailing for it, which is what this all is. And uh, thinking about the shot, and then I just started animating. That's one of the things I love about 2D animation, is that I can sit down and have an idea for a shot, and or a character, and I can sit down and animate it in a matter of, you know, have it designed and animated in a matter of minutes. Well, not minutes, but, you know, a few hours. Uh, are there instances of when you don't use onion skinning? Oh, sure. I mean, if you, if you just want to, um, if you want to see the animation, I, I, I'm always flipping back and forth, even with my onion skin on, because I want to see the animation. But a lot of times, if you if you just want to see the animation and animate that way, which a lot of guys do, um, you can do you can. Yeah, you know, I can just turn this off. Uh, where am I at? And for I, oh. the people that don't know, what what exactly is uh, onion skinning? Oh, onion skinning is just that. Think about a think about an onion skin, and you can see through it, right? And so that's the idea behind it. We're we're showing the drawings. It's, it's like you can see through and see the drawing ahead and be and uh, before and after. 
So it's it's almost like it's creating like an onion skin of drawings. So I can see where my the current drawing that I'm working on where it goes in relation to the drawing before and after. And that's kind of what. <laughs> that's the reason why the uh, animation paper back then was so thin, so you can see through it, and thus onion skinning with paper. Yeah, but it it actually wasn't all that thin. A lot of people think it was thin, and it's not. It, it wasn't all that thin. Um, you, they would you know that's why they would have light tables. Yeah. And, um, uh, there we go. So, um, a lot of times they'd use a light table to, you know, to see through. I never use my light table, but I do use the, the onion skin on here quite a bit. But here, I'm just doing, this is kind of its own key drawing right here. It's not really an in-between. It's kind of an in-between, but it's its own key. So I'm really not even looking at the onion skin I'm looking at the when I flip the drawing I'm looking at the animation that way uh, is this in Photoshop but for Mac and things uh, things asking about the, the software you're currently using this yeah this is TV paint I am using a Mac uh, but I think it works for Windows as well The girls are home. Hopefully they'll come through the right door. Oh, the little dogs are getting happy. <laughs> Someone's happy that mommy's home. <laughs> more questions? Um, could you do more live Z sketches in... Yes. Your time, like the farm one you did. Yes, we will. We plan on it. Um, it's just, um, it's hard to get out of the studio and do that. Um, but uh, we will be doing that. Let me go ahead and play this. I just want to play this section. Sorry about the dog, you guys. Well, <laughs> it does sound plausible. So enough. you can see that little in between. It gave him well, a little <laughs> chuckle. It does sound plausible enough. Well, <laughs> it does sound plausible enough. Well. <laughs> It does sound plausible enough. Well, it does sound plausible enough. Just a little bit. Well, it does. It doesn't need much when you you know you don't have to over animate. That's one of the key, one of the key mistakes I see um, in young animators is over animating. You don't need to over animate. You just need to bring it to life. Well, well, well. A little <laughs> chuckle. <laughs> Hold on one second, because um, I'm going to take care of the little doggy. <laughs> Keep them entertained, Dustin. Hi. Hi, everybody. So, I'm taking over the live stream temporarily until Father takes care of the current situation. Um, but hi, how are you? I'm doing good. Dad's doing good. Uh, we, had a little, we had a lot of fun. Uh, last night we went out, had, had a good time, had some uh, dinner and all that stuff, and uh, it was all good. Um, but, uh, yeah, any, any other questions? And, uh, to over compliment about the, the beard earlier, thank you, yes. I'm, I'm actually thinking of, uh, trimming this. Okay, I'm back. Welcome back. Sorry about that. I had to take care of the dogs. <laughs> that was an unforeseen <laughs> complication. There we go. So, there's a little in between there. So, there's that little <laughs> chuckle. Well, well. <laughs> See him inhaling. Let's get it. Let's find another another big pose. I'm going to bring this over here. Let's do this. So I'm going to put this I'm going to, in between that on four. I shifted some of the, the timing. So I want to get that mouth open on this on this in between. 
There we go. I'm going to open that mouth right up. Has TV paint ever crashed on you while you were working? I have never, ever had TV paint crash on me. Not once. And not I've been, once? Not once. I've been using it for f four years now, three years. I've never had it crash. Are there any tips for keeping the volume or shape of drawing? You know, the, the best tip I can give you as far as watching your volumes is just that. Watch. you got to really pay attention to your volumes. Look at your first drawing. Look at your current drawing. Look at the middle drawings. Um, you have to, you just have to be aware of it. A lot of people, will their volumes will change, but you have to be aware of what's happening. And that's why I tend to, especially if I'm going pose to pose, your volumes will tend to stay more consistent because you're jumping from one part of this, you know, the whole shot to another. Um, and then you're breaking down in between. So everything will stay fairly consistent. If you're going straight ahead, that's where it gets difficult to keep your volumes consistent. And so my biggest recommendation is just really, really pay attention to it. That's the best thing I can get. The best thing I can say. Mind if I uh, answer a question real quick? Sure. So I got a question. Uh, uh, have you worked on a Disney movie uh, before? Oh, Dustin? Yeah, uh, towards me. And um, I, I kind of have, in a, in a way, in the 3D industry, and it wasn't directly towards Disney, but it was through um, Marvel and Star Wars. And Disney uh, owns those... Uh, uh, those uh, um, yeah. franchises You're right so in a way yes uh, but not in the same way that uh, that dad has through traditional uh, animation I was more in the uh, 3d visual effects department so if you ever saw a movie with the 3d glasses I would actually create that uh, through uh, through computer work and I've done stuff like uh, Doctor Strange Captain America Winter Soldier Star Wars Force Awakens uh, like a lot of the Marvel movies from the from like the past four years, uh, like about two years ago. Yep. So, so yes, I I kind of sorted it the uh, Disney work. So, back to you. <laughs> back to our <laughs> regularly scheduled program. What's the most you love about your brother Travis's work? Travis is extremely creative, and uh, he knows mechanics really well. So Travis will find ways of um, doing animation that, well, well, he'll put really unexpected, really charming little bits of acting in his animation. He did a lot of that with Coda. He was one of the Coda animators in Brother Bear, and uh, he did some really great stuff with Coda. Uh, do you use the professional or the basic edition of TV paint? I'm using the professional only because I'm anticipating, you know, maybe hooking up with other, um, uh, uh, other animators and, and, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank, but the, the, the two, the standard and the professional version are basically the same. You're not getting anything more in the uh, in the professional other than the ability to link with other uh, setups to do it for a studio link setups uh, how like is it like a license that yeah. goes up to everybody else right exactly that, that sort of thing for a professional is there a limit to how many of the of that same license I don't know do? I have no idea because uh, we haven't done it yet There we go. So I'm getting that mouth open. And I'm not really worrying about the cheeks adjusting in shape. Because the cheeks are so fat and fluffy. Um, I'm just letting him open his mouth. And not really, like I said, not really adjusting, you know, cheek shape. Because I don't think you're really going to see it. So now if I play it. Well, it does sound plausible enough tonight, but why don't we wait till tomorrow? Uh, and Nick just replied about um about the licensing is not a group license. I'm gonna bring this back 
here. So Nick is explaining about the professional uh, license for TV paint. And uh, it's not a group license. In, in professional, it's set up for a pipeline. Pipeline, thank you. I was drawing a blank on pipeline. Yeah, everyone still has their own licenses. Yes. Thank you, Nick. I, I, I was drawing a complete blank on the word pipeline. Well, it does sound plausible enough tonight, but why don't we wait till tomorrow? But let's wait for the common sense of the morning. There we go. How well, do you feel about double it the does sound tonight? plausible enough tonight. I'm really excited. I'm going to turn this down real quick. Um, I'm super excited about it. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm. Uh, I think it's going to be great. So there you go. <laughs> Not bad. Are you a fan of animation or filmmaking in general? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, that's what I do. So I love filmmaking. I love animation. I love storytelling. I love all of that. Um, so, yes. I mean, the, the reason why... You do animations because you love the anim the animated features, and I went to 3D because I love 3D movies. So yeah, we kind we kind of do the stuff that we love doing. So it'd be kind of ridiculous if we if we ended up working on those things if we did did not like uh, filmmaking and all that stuff. Right. There we go. Now we're back on track. I'm going to feel like I've, I had a little hiccup there. Doing this, talking to you guys and listening to the dialogue, I'm having a hard time uh, keeping everything straight in my head. Sorry, you guys. I'm a little, I'm a little spacey. Yeah, I think my, uh, I think my camera froze up. Your camera? Yep, camera froze up. Um, this one did. Oh, is it stuck on you? No, it's... it's it's not that, it's the camera shot itself froze to me like this. <laughs> well, let's not worry about you and let's talk about some questions. Yes. Do you, do you like drawing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to skip that yeah. question. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Da, da, da. Can you make a Draw My Life video on your channel? Draw My Life video? I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? Uh, not entirely sure. Maybe um, uh, like drawing other people or drawing yourself like a character maybe? My guess. If, if somebody knows what Draw My Life is, please explain it. Any mentorships? No, we don't have any right now. We're not offering any. Um, just because we're so busy and we're traveling a lot. Um, we want to do, it's something we'd like to do in the future. It's just not something we can do right now. Um, you know, just September and October alone, we're going to be in four different countries. And, um, uh, and for those of you that are watching, we will be in, uh, in September, mid-September, we're going to be in the Philippines and Man uh, Manila. Uh, at an animation convention there, Icon Manila. And then um, I'll be in Co Pueblo, Colorado um, at the end of September uh, for a few days there. And then right after that, we'll be down in Sao Paulo, Brazil uh, the following week. And then right after that, the following week after that, um, or two weeks after that, we're going to be in Tokyo, Japan, uh, lecturing there. So we're kind of making a tour all over you know we're going all over the place really quick um but uh we uh we will be settling down at some point and um and i, I definitely would like to do internships and mentorships just can't do it yet did you write your dialogue uh on the speech tab of uh, on tv paint no, I didn't. I'm just looking at the waveform. You can do that right in here. Um, 
is it, where is it right here I believe yeah right in here um, for those of you that don't know I can write you know I can blah 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 blah, blah. I can write uh, in there let me get rid of that so I can go let's see no, no. <laughs> well and then laugh laugh I, I can write out the whole thing just like what I would in a uh, an exposure sheet but um, I like just using the waveform <laughs> Well, and just scrubbing. But it is a good option. I, I like. Uh, I think if it was, um, if we were set up more for a pipeline of animators working, and you know we had the dialogue all set up ahead of time, uh, I think that would be a good thing for editorial to go in and and uh, maybe put the uh, the dialogue in there like they used to do for us. On our exposure sheets, uh, but in this case, I just like using the waveform. And uh, someone uh, explained about what uh, "Draw My Life" is. Oh, good. And uh, "Draw My Life" is an ex explanation, like a presentation, of moments throughout your life using drawings. Oh, okay. Uh, that's okay. Uh, probably will never do that. Um. I can tell you about my life, <laughs> but I don't want to draw it. <laughs> there's some, there's some dark crap in there, man. <laughs> you can make a very dark horse comic out of it. <laughs> would you consider traveling to Puerto Rico? I would love going to Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is very high on our list. Um, I, I want to go so bad, actually. I hope you guys are doing all right after the storm i know you guys are still even after a year later you guys are still trying to pull yourselves together and uh and i really hope you guys are doing all right can the stylus you're using be uh found on amazon or uh did you did you get a specific art store the stylus yes. the stylus comes with my wacom cintiq so this is a stylus for my cintiq so it all comes together jump to the other camera so this is my Cintiq, for those of you that might be coming in later. Uh, I work on a tablet, and this is the stylus that goes with it. So, there you go. I'll jump back. So let me see if that butt works. How much time did you spend on planning the acting? Uh, maybe about an hour. It does sound plausible enough tonight, but how do we wait till but. tomorrow? It does sound plausible enough tonight, but how do we wait till tomorrow? So I want to see what I want to do is I don't want to keep uh, that mouth open so long. Tonight, but. but. Do you have any tips uh, for animating characters uh, in perspective? Tonight, and do you use the perspective grid to animate in perspective? I don't use the grid to animate in perspective. Pers pers blah, 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 blah. Perspective is a funny thing. And um, I really, I just eyeball it. And it's just, it's one of those things where if it looks right, it is right. Um... Because if, if something's out of perspective, you can see it. You'll see it right away. You know it. And so I tend to not need a grid. Um, but I can, I mean, we've, I've had several uh, requests to do uh, a course in perspective. One point, two point, three point uh, perspective, animating to a grid, that sort of thing. So I might be doing that in the future. It does sound plausible enough tonight, but how do we wait till there tomorrow? There we go. That timing's better. It does sound plausible enough tonight, but... How do we wait till tomorrow? It does sound plausible enough tonight, but how do we wait till... There, okay. So I want to break this down a little bit more in the in the but. What are, uh, what are your requirements to come to Mexico to give a master class? Um, I mean, I, obviously I charge a certain fee per day, and... Uh, and that's pretty much it. And um, we would need, the way we usually work it when we go to different countries is, you know, our airfare and hotel is taken care of and, and there's a fee. And then we come in and we teach. And uh, um, and we've we've had great success with that. And, and really, I'll teach whatever you guys need at any time. So, you know, it's really, it's whatever you guys need. And luckily, you know, I've been able to do a lot of different things in my career. So I can teach animation, I can teach design, I can teach drawing, digital drawing, painting, animal drawing. There's a lot of different things that we, you know, 
we do. And that, all that stuff you can find on our website, creatureartteacher.com. If you go over there, you'll see, you know, we've got all kinds of courses and, and so many different things, whether it's animation, character design, digital painting, color theory, uh, storyboarding, story writing, um, all kinds of stuff. And uh, when is the next tour, and uh, where, where are you planning on going? Uh, I just mentioned it just a little while ago. We're going to be in uh, in the Philippines in September. Then I'm going to be in Colorado. Then I'm going to be in South America and in Brazil uh, in uh, the beginning of October. And then the middle of October, we're going to be in Tokyo. Nice. And for the latecomers, uh, who, whose voice is that for the uh, uh, animation? That's me. It's you. That's me, baby. <laughs> that is me. So here I'm just having him settle into his pose. I hope everyone's had a good week. We've had a good week. Trying to lose weight, but we've been out exercising like crazy. Did an eight mile walk yesterday. Low impact, but still it was eight miles. What are your views on Hayao Miyazaki's approach to animation storytelling? I love his work. Um, I can't say much about his approach. I'm not super familiar with his approach. I've been to the studio and I love how they run the studio. It's basically, he dictates everything, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Um, you know, but he's got the ability to do it. There is like, it's very, very old, old fashioned in, in the studio. Oh, lady. it's old school. I like walking in. I like seeing whiskey bottles and, <laughs> and ashtrays and, you know, sitting on the desks. It's, yeah, it's pretty cool. Because over there, they allow you to do all that at, at the desk. Oh, yeah. Have you thought of starting a Discord? A Discord? No. Is that a group a group chat uh, software I was telling you about before? Oh. Is that what that is? That is what it is. Oh, I didn't know that. And it, so, so it is a possibility that we might start one of those up in the in the future, but we're kind of focusing on every everything else right now. Yeah. It's kind of like the whole Twitch thing that's currently on hold. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is the most used animation style currently? Uh, frame by frame or cut out? Oh, I have no idea. I don't know. The most used style. That's a good question. I don't have a clue. Do you drink and draw? I never, ever, ever drink and draw. Don't you ever drink and draw. <laughs> no, I don't. Draw uh, safely. Yeah. Draw, no, the last time, you know, when we were at Disney, uh, the last time, uh, we, you know, when we were doing our overtime, we would have little social gatherings and then we'd go back to work. And I remember when we were working on Mulan, uh, we got together, uh, took a little break at the end of the day. I was going to work until about midnight. So at 6 o'clock, we got together, had dinner. And I, we were having a good time. I, said, I, I think we had about, I think I had about four beers. I, had, I sucked down a bunch of Coronas. Yeah. And, uh, and went back to work. Didn't work out so well. Even, you know, just a, just a few beers. Just a little bit of a, you know, just a little inebriation threw me off. And uh, so, ever since then, I never, ever drink and draw. What would make a character too animated? Well, it's, it, it's, a, it's a matter of, uh, of taste, I guess, you know. But for me, it's when characters are moving around for no reason. When they, you know, that's, that's too animated. And that's something, you know, a lot of times, this is a statement I always say, and you'll, you'll, you'll hear me say it a lot. 
animation is the is the art of bringing something to life it's not the art of moving something and so sometimes it's just like playing music a lot of times it's the it's the notes that you don't play that really emphasize the notes that you do play and it makes that music beautiful right and so it's the same with animation if, if, when you can hold back in places and pick your places to, to add your movement and, and movement that means something then that animation is really going to sing and it's really going to say something to the viewer if you're just moving stuff to move stuff it doesn't mean anything it just becomes noise uh, mind if I answer a question oh my god <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite uh, game ever? What are your thoughts on the Uncharted series, the story and gameplay? Okay, we're not going to go into a big diatribe no, right no. now. Okay, good. No. <laughs> Basically, I played one Uncharted game for a little bit. It was good, but I personally am more of a huge fan of their other game, The Last of Us, and I cannot wait for The Last of Us 2. That was really concise. Very nice. Good job. <laughs> Let me see what that, how that butt settles. I'm plausible enough tonight, but can we wait till tomorrow? There we tomorrow? go. Yeah. I'm plausible but. enough tonight, but can we wait till tomorrow? I just I'm want to see how that settles. Tonight, but can we wait till tomorrow? Good. Let's throw another drawing in there, just to break that down into fours. What do you got for me, Dustin? What do you got? Oops, didn't want to do that. Uh, Nick Rose saying, uh, if you want, if you want us to visit, please email uh, to booking at uh, creatureartteacher.com. Yes, yes. Thank you, Nick. Sorry, I should have said that. And uh, also found a question: What's the hardest emotion for you to convey through animation? You know what? I don't know that there is. I don't think any emotion is harder or easier than others. I mean, extreme anger, extreme happiness. Obviously, those you can get across fairly easy. It's the subtle emotions that I think are probably the most difficult. None of them are easy. I should, you know, some are less hard than others, like I, the, the examples I was just giving. Um, but uh, it's the subtle, it's the subtle emotions. It's the the, the and the emotional transitions that can get really difficult you know there's a shot where I let me pull another shot up um, uh, let's see file recent files whoops anger test this is one uh, this is just posed out very scribbly this is still in the scribbly phase but this is this is also going to be in our course and this is a shot where I was trying to animate anger but really hold it back until he just kind of explodes at the end it's an okay shot uh but let me play it for you and this is this is something where i uh i actually acted it out and kind of felt it and then did this did this animation it's like oh he's trying to he just got some bad news and he's like oh okay and, oh he pushes the chair away he's pumping his fists He's walking around. Okay, all right. He's getting it under control. He's trying to keep himself under control. <sighs> Takes a breath, but then ah, uh, and then loses it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know that kind of stuff is a lot of fun to be able to. And this one, I just I, I animated it as long as I wanted to animate it, so it's a nice long shot. But um, you know, doing this kind of thing where you're really trying to hold back, where you're really trying to play up the acting uh, and not just go with the stereotypical type of anger. Um, that kind of stuff is fun. It's a lot of fun. So I'm back. I'm back on the other scene. How you doing over there, Dustin? Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? No, I'm here. <laughs> but, uh... Somebody's asking if I'm going to be talking along if you ever uh, if you ever travel to uh, Mexico. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. We shall see. Um, Nick found another question. Uh, animators in Japan use color, colored lines in separate areas that are to be colored in different colors, like e.g. shadows and uh, yes. so forth, uh, to make it easier for coloring department. Uh, did you do something similar at Disney? We did. 
not to the extent that they do that they do uh, I've seen in Japan but we did do that for shadows um, color separations different things like that we did do that that was in the cleanup department not in the rough animation when we did rough animation it was pretty much you know working in pencil every animator worked different some guys worked in pencil some guys worked in colored pencil graphite china marker whatever it might be and it was when it got to clean up when it got you know everything got redrawn that's when you know they would pull out the different colored pencils uh, what uh, brush are you using and why why not the black pen brush uh, this is the number two pencil brush that they have. I just like the look of it. It looks like pencil, and that's why I'm using it. It has that that natural texture. Yeah, it just feels more natural, and it looks. I think it looks good. So that's that's the only reason I'm using it. Uh, have you seen any Don uh, Hertzfeld films? Um, Don Hertzfeld? Yeah. I don't know who that... I don't know. Like, if, um... If the person could, uh... Label any of the, any of the movies that he's done, we'll, we'll probably remember better. No, I haven't. There we go. Looks like we got a, a brand newcomer uh, behind <laughs> the camera asking the questions. <laughs> oh, man, you're brand new. Brand spanking new. This is my son, Dustin, behind the camera <clears throat> asking the questions while I draw. Because uh, there's no way that I can read questions and draw at the same time. So we are the dynamic duo here. And uh, so Dustin, uh, since day one, has been helping me field questions. And uh, that's what we do. I'm going to play this again. Well, it does sound plausible enough tonight, but why don't we wait till tomorrow? Let's wait for the common sense of the morning. Well, it does sound plausible enough tonight, but why don't we wait till tomorrow? Let's wait for the common sense. So, one thing I'm going to do. Why don't we wait till tomorrow? Tonight, but... Uh, Hear that breath? Nine, but... There's a breath right there that I missed. So I'm going to open up his mouth right here. Uh, but... Well, <laughs> it does sound plausible enough tonight, but why don't we wait till tomorrow? Yeah. So I'm just going to open his mouth there on that last drawing. <clears throat> or you can just cut that particular audio out. No, I like. I wanted to open his mouth anyway. I think it needs a little blend frame. Gotcha. To go to transition. What exactly is over animating, and could you give an example? I we were just talking about over animating. So uh, over animating. Uh, okay, gotcha. The the over for me over animating is just put. Uh, it's it's putting movement in where you don't need it. It's you know you only move a character when you need to bring it when you need it to move okay and a lot of times people feel like young animators feel like if the character is not moving they're not doing their job and you know this is not the art of moving it's the art of bringing something to life and sometimes something just doesn't have to move as much what is that flickering on the left when you draw that uh oh it's the i don't know it's that's the the it's uh, it's some graphic thing for the for the brush it's probably like the the thing that generates the texture yeah the texture generator there you go yeah I have no idea to be honest with you do you prefer animating on paper or digital um I love paper you know I had this question before you want to grab those drawings for me again there's something nice about or, or you can grab the drawings right there. It doesn't matter. Those, there's drawings there, too. Uh, well, I'm already... Sorry. But go ahead and jump to the full frame. Yep. There's, you know, there's something nice about when you're drawing on paper, you know, you've got physical 
physical drawings, okay? And, and I like being able to flip the drawings and see the movement. Um, there's something really nice about having that. You know, when you're done, you've got, you've got, I've got, you know, physical drawings. I've got drawings I can, I can hold up and show and all that kind of stuff. When it comes to actually having them serve their purpose, which is to animate, um, it's difficult because I have to scan them and then I have to bring them into another piece of software so that I can move them, you know, move the timing around and all that sort of thing. Um, and that, that part of it's kind of a pain in the butt. When I'm working digitally, the process is so fast because I'm, I'm my shot is right there. It's instant. When I add a drawing, I'm playing it back instant. There is no shooting. There is none of, of that stuff that I need to worry about scanning, any of, anything like that. The drawback, obviously, is I don't have any physical drawings at the end of it. But um, it's hard to say. I mean, I really like, I, I love hand-drawn on paper animation but when it comes to actually creating animation and seeing it play back I like working digitally because it's a much uh, quicker process yeah, so the hand animation is slower but it gives you that like nostalgia enough tonight but yes how exactly. we wait till tomorrow sorry we'll enough tonight but how but, we wait till tomorrow? but uh yeah we'll digital tonight, makes it but more efficient how we wait till tomorrow yeah exactly so I'm going to go back and change this one here. What's the best type of drawing to start out with, cartoony or realistic? Uh, realistic. I think you need to you need to understand reality before you can before you can pull from it before you can abstract from it. You know, when people say cartoony, what they're really saying is something that's cartoony is something that's caricatured and it's caricatured from reality. OK, so I don't even though, let's say Lion King, for example, when I was designing Nala for the Lion King, I didn't just sit down and start drawing cartoony lions. No, I had to I had to understand how lions moved and, and real lions and I drew them. I had to understand their anatomy so that when I came when it came time to design the cartoony version, I was able to take what I knew about lions and keep the best part of the lion and exaggerate it. And, uh, and in this case, it was a lion cub and create the character that I did. So I really do think it's important to understand reality before you start caricaturing it, which is another version of saying cartoony. What happens to all the paper drawings after the movie is complete? They go into a vault. And uh, let me just look at this real quick. They go into a vault. And um, oops. There we go. Um, here we go right here. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to do a couple of different things at once here. But 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 not tonight. But. Uh, they go into the, the, the into a vault. The they call it at Disney anyway. It's the it's the uh, animation research library, and uh, um, and it's every everything that's ever been done at Disney is held in this in this temperature controlled big warehouse vault. Um, every drawing from Snow White, Mortimer Mouse. <laughs> I mean the what was the rabbit the, the the rabbit that Disney was doing in the beginning before even Mickey Mouse. But anyway, everything, everything is in there. Okay, Every, the mouse or bi the rabbit? yeah, there's bi literally billions of drawings in there because it's, it's every film that's ever been drawn is in this vault. You know, we discussed about, um, Miyazaki and all that, but what are your thoughts on the general, uh, Japanese anime style? Oh, I, I'm, it's. It's cool. I like it. You know, there's a lot of different anime styles. So, it, you know, just saying, you know, there's bad anime and there's good anime. Very true. But in general, I think it's cool. And you know what my favorite anime is? Cowboy Bebop. Bingo.
There we go. Let's see how that plays. Well, have you ever been in the vault? Possible enough tonight, but why don't we wait till tomorrow? Yeah, that feels good. Uh, I have been in the vault. I've gotten, I've been, I've gone in and I pulled out Bambi backgrounds and Bambi animation, Pinocchio. Um, I've been in the vault many, many, many times. A lot of times when we're starting a film. Um, we want to see how the old guys did it in the old days. Uh, maybe there's a similar scene or shot or something like that. And we'll go into the vault and we'll look at what they did and, uh, and research it. So, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool uh, resource you know, for, for the artists at Disney. It's, just, it's an amazing piece of physical history that you can, when you can go in and, and pull out drawings from you know, Sleeping Beauty or, or Cinderella and you can flip through them and yeah, it's it's really cool. Why is the industry shying away from 2D? You know what? There's a lot of different theories on that. You know, 2D is a very labor intensive, expensive way of making films and so is 3D. I mean, they're all, they're all labor intensive and expensive. So, what happens is, you know, if you spend four years making a movie hand drawn and for whatever reason nobody goes to see it or not enough people go to see it in order for it to turn a profit, you got to rethink what you're doing. And so I think what happened was I think we hit a string of films that I think the stories weren't that great. or And I think the formula that we were using, which is the, you know, the big Broadway musical formula that Disney was doing all through the 90s, I think it got old. I think people just got tired of seeing it. And uh, in my opinion, this is my opinion completely. So you guys can disagree with me, agree with me, whatever. And um, and then something else came along, this you know 3D animation. You know, it started out with Toy Story and everything. And Pixar brought this wave of really cool imagery. and But not just, it wasn't just cool imagery. They were telling amazingly great, different stories than what we had been telling at Disney. And it really caught on. And I think that... Um, I think the audiences were starved for that sort of thing at the time when it happened. And so all of a sudden, that's where people were going to see, you know, those films. Everyone else jumped on the bandwagon and started doing 3D, just like they did with 2D back in the 90s. And it became the new popular thing, and people weren't going to see the, the, the 2D as much. And I think the 2D films, were the stories were suffering a little bit. And so... If if you have to if you have 120 million dollars that you have to sink into a film, which is what these films will cost, for just from a, a, an immediate cost, not even overhead and, and advertising and all that, uh, then you want to make sure that you're putting it into something that's going to have a really good bet that's going to do well in the box office, and that's what 3D was at the time, and so that's why it's kind of shifted over, in my opinion. I do think 2D will come back, and. Uh, Eventually, but it's got to be done in a different way. It's got to be something that people haven't seen before and uh, you know, Who knows? We'll see what happens Did you um, study tomorrow. the art of acting specifically? Uh, till tomorrow. I have I have studied acting um, Not acting specifically uh, But through my course of you know through animation I've taken improv classes acting classes I've read books on acting that sort of thing to help me with my acting and for me, the biggest thing it comes down to with acting is just making it real for yourself. When you can make it real, when you can put yourself into the shot and, and feel it and act it out the way that you feel it, then it becomes real. And then that, that's when the animation really sings. Do you like Triplets of Belleville? I love Triplets of Belleville. Don't we, Dustin? Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, very much so. I was up against... Uh, triplets of Belleville, or, or we were, uh, on Brother Bear when we were uh, nominated for the Oscar. So uh, it's a very cool film. Very cool. And the victory went to Finding Nemo. And the victory went to Finding That Little Fish. Yes. <laughs> How would you approach a shot with characters being seen from far away? With characters being seen from far away, well, it depends on, you know, how is your shot staged? Are they staged from, you know, are they really tiny in the shot? 
And if that's the case, I might animate them up a little bit and then and then shrink it down afterwards. So what was your first animation? My first animation was a bouncing ball. The very first animation I ever did was a bouncing ball. And when I shot it and got to see it on film, I was hooked. I was absolutely hooked. I, could, I, I, I had, you know, done stuff like in books, you know, when you draw in your, in your library book or something and flip the paper, pa pa the pages, and, uh, you know, done that. But I'd never seen anything actually shot. And so when I shot it, uh, I was just, I was blown away. Well, and and that's a, when I decided this is what I want to do. What about like uh, scenes like from, a, like from a show or from... Well, the very, first, the very first production scene I ever animated was uh, Roger Rabbit for an uh, animated short called, uh, called uh, Roller Coaster Rabbit. And, um, and it's, he was on a roller coaster and he's holding baby Herman and they've just flipped over and, and completely tumbled and flipped over uh, Jessica Rabbit who's tied up on the, on the tracks. And then he just looks at camera really strange and we cut away. Oh, that but, you did that? Yeah, it was my very first shot I've ever animated ever. I thought it was uh, him dra dragging himself out of the, uh, the tent with all the bullet holes. No, I didn't animate that. I cleaned it up. Oh, he cleaned that one up. Yeah. But he animated him with a confused look. Yeah, I was, uh, I was, uh, animate, the animator was Mark Kausler, and uh, I was his assistant. Hey, <laughs> the Yes, that's right. <laughs> but yeah, I was Mark Kausler's assistant. Mark Kausler's first film he ever animated on was Yellow Submarine. Hmm? Yellow Submarine, the Beatles. Really? Yeah, 1968. Wow. Did you see Brother Baron Theaters when it came out? Yes, <laughs> I sure <laughs> did. The whole family did. <laughs> yeah. When you spend six years making a movie, directing it, you're certainly going to see it in the theater. You want to see how audiences react. So I used to go and, and just sit by myself and just watch the audience and see if they reacted, see how they reacted. Do you know Richard Williams personally? I don't. I've always wanted to meet him. Uh, my brother just met him over in Annecy in France at the animation festival there. But um, uh, I've never met him. I would love to. I, I used to work with his son. Uh, Alex Williams, um, but I uh, and we know each other, but uh, I've never met Richard Williams. What did you think of uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? I love that film. Roger, Who Framed Roger Rabbit came out when I was an intern, when I was learning animation, so I was I was all over it, and I thought Richard Williams' animation in the opening was just unbelievably brilliant. And also the way they made the characters interact with with the uh, real life objects was yeah. very well done. Yeah, that was Robert Zemeckis. Oh, was he the? Uh, he was the, the director. The, oh, the director. Who also directed Forrest Gump. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, do you know? Lieutenant Dan. What animation program would you suggest for uh, for a beginner? I, if 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 you're very serious about animation, just go for it and get TV Paint because TV Paint is I mean it's really um, this is what it's made for and uh, and you can make it as simple you know as what I'm doing which is just a pencil test or you can do an entire feature on it you know full color and all kinds of stuff but um, you know if you're serious about animation. Um, even as a beginner, I really recommend TV Paint. And not to plug ourselves, but I'm going to plug it anyway. If you uh, become a member on our website, you actually get a big discount on a purchase of um, TV Paint. It actually pays for the membership, basically. The, the savings is big enough that you it pays for the membership. Why is the term scenes used instead of shots? <laughs> well, it go, I, I, you know what? I jump back and forth. In animation, we used to call them scenes. And a scene usually is a collection of shots. Um, I've, I, I jump back and forth. I, sometimes I'll say shot. Whoops. 
Um, sometimes I'll say shot. Sometimes I'll say scene. It's to me, it's an interchangeable thing. But the proper the proper term is shot. So I want to see how this plays. Well, it does sound plausible enough tonight, but why don't we wait till tomorrow? Let's wait for the common sense yeah. of the morning. So I'm trying to get a nice smooth transition well, between shots. I mean, it between does poses. Sound plausible enough tonight, but why don't we wait till tomorrow? Let's wait for the common sense of the morning. There. So now it's really just going through and smoothing out. Uh, smoothing out the animation like in here I'm going to add a drawing what actors uh, work do you love the most I'm a big fan of Leonardo DiCaprio I'm a big fan of uh, George Clooney oh yeah he uh, many <laughs> I'm a huge huge fan of Jeff Bridges um the dude. The dude. Uh, Sam Elliott. I really like Sam Elliott a lot. Uh, there's a lot of actors that I like. How do you feel about Flash Animation and uh, Adobe Animate? I don't know enough about it. Uh, the Adobe Animate, I don't, I don't know anything about it. And I don't know that it does this type of animation. So I don't think I don't think it does this. If you get a membership on your site, do you get a TV Paint? You don't get TV Paint. You get a discount for TV Paint. How much of a discount? It's uh, I think it's like thirty percent or close to thirty percent. Really? Nick, Nick, yeah, it's a it's a it's a pretty deep discount. It's pretty good. Uh, I, I could be wrong. I might be overstating it. Uh, Nick knows more than I do. Nick, Nick, we need your help, Nick. Nick. Nick, 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 Nickelodeon. <laughs> There's my dog. When using TV paint, do you need to paint each and every frame? Yes. This is just like traditional, good old traditional animation. People ask, is, you know, does it do the tweening for you? The tweening. <laughs> the in-betweening. No, it doesn't. You got to draw it. It's a lot of drawing. It's a lot of work, but it gives you the ability to do it, just like old school. This is how we did it. Have you considered coming to Peru or Bolivia? Yes. Um, I've been. We've gone down to South America. I've gone down a couple of times now, and. Um, uh, I would love to come to Peru and Bolivia. I've made it to Chile twice and Colombia and Brazil. Um, so I, you know, we obviously we need to get to Peru and Bolivia. Is there one question you wish aspiring animators would ask you about animating? That's a really good question. Is there a question that I wish they would ask? You know, I think they're all, they they've all been asked. Um, There's got to be at least one. I can't out think. There I, I don't know. I've never thought of that. That's a really good question. Well, yeah, for me, it's more about you know getting the inspir. You know, how do you? It's the inspiration. How do you get the inspiration? Not the inspiration. That's not the right word. It's the. You know, how do you how do you get the end result on the screen, that sort of thing. And it really comes from time and patience. Um, and I'm, I'm not phrasing it right, but it's, you know, there's so much that goes into what we do that people don't realize, not even young animators that are, or young people that are wanting to animate. Um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an art form that takes a lot of time to develop. And you have to be willing to go for the long haul it's not something that's instantly going to happen and that's the thing so it, it's it takes patience you know f f patience for you to give your give yourself the patience to learn it and take time it's like you learning a musical instrument you know it's it's just something that takes time 
If you could meet Walt Disney, what would you ask him? Oh. <laughs> what were you thinking? Oh, I don't know. Uh, well, wow, I don't know. Well, I think I would ask, how are you alive right now? <laughs> how are you alive right now? <laughs> how is this possible? <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna. <laughs> But I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start winding down here because uh, I've pretty much got. I've got all the lip sync in there. But I wanted to just go over this one more time. Um, this all started with you know, like I said, coming up with an idea for wanting to animate something, and so I went to this website, which I recommend you guys do if you're if you have the ability to animate. Um, look up literary quotes. You know, that's a it's a good it's a good resource to find really interesting lines of dialogue. Or look up, you know, some of your favorite lines from films and record them yourself. Or you can go on YouTube and find the lines, you know, actors delivering the lines and grab that as a soundbite and, and animate that. Um, but what I did was I found this line, I recorded it myself, uploaded it uh, 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 into TV Paint. And um, let me turn this off and just listen to it. I just listened to that dialogue. <laughs> It does sound plausible enough tonight, but why don't we wait till tomorrow? Let's wait for the common sense of the morning. Just listen to it over and over again to get a sense of how that acting would play out in my head. And then I do what, I, uh, remember we were talking about the scribble test, where I, I phrase out, I find the phrases, find my poses within the phrases, and then do this really fast scribble test, which is what this is here. Well, <laughs> it does sound plausible enough tonight, but... Why don't we wait till tomorrow? Let's wait for the common sense of the morning. I don't worry about pretty drawings. You can see these are ugly, yucky, nasty drawings, but it gets across the idea, it gets across the acting, because once I have that done, then I can draw over the top, which is what I've done here, and make the drawings pretty. Well, <laughs> it does sound plausible enough tonight, but why don't we wait till tomorrow? Let's wait for the common sense of the morning. You can see the ghost image of the of the old test as I've added drawings. Now let's watch it without the the, the uh, old test. Well, <laughs> it does sound plausible enough tonight, but why don't we wait till tomorrow? Let's wait for the common sense of the morning. So that next phase is going through and redrawing those drawings, making them pretty, and finding my dialogue hits. And, and drawing the mouth shapes according to the way the dialogue is telling me to draw them. And that's pretty much it. And then it's a matter of getting it through and spending the time and energy and getting all the drawings in to make it all nice and pretty and smooth. And uh, a shot like this usually takes me about a week. And, uh, and then you move on to the next shot. So um, I've got time for one more question if we want to do it. Um, is it possible to be a freelancer in between? Yeah, I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't know how much work there is for freelance in betweening, uh, but if I, I think so, I'm not sure. I don't think there's a lot of work out there, but I, I would imagine that's a service that, you know, people need to have done. So, probably. And TV if you can Paint, find a 2D studio that to do it. Yeah, and TV Paint's a one one time purchase, it's not a subscription. TV Paint is a one time purchase, yes, it's not a subscription. And you yeah. said that uh, um, we that the website uh, the membership gives uh, new new people a discount. For yes, if you get a membership to our to our website, you will get a discount for TV Paint. So that's a big deal, and the discount equals the cost of the membership, pretty much. It, it's almost one for one. So you're, it's almost paying it's paying itself off if you decide to buy TV Paint. So that's kind of cool. We've got a really good you know partnership with them. Um, and not, but it's not be, I, I'm not loud, you know, I'm not talking about how much I love TV paint because of the partnership. I'm, I'm partners with them because I love TV paint. That's the, that's the thing. I just, I love this software. Um, I loved it so much that I contacted them to let them know how much I loved it. And from that point on, we kind of, we, we became friends. And I got my own, my own question. So, sure. so I know that, um, we're going to be uploading this on, onto YouTube after the live stream is over. Uh, but will this be part? Uh, will this animation be part of the um, the future animation lesson? Yes. Or the, so this animation that you're seeing here will be part of my acting for animation course, 
And so um, I'm going to be going much more in depth into it, talking about the acting, talking about my thoughts behind the acting. I'm going to be doing a lot more shots for the course. I'm going to be talking about pantomime, dialogue, um, all the different aspects that go into acting and all the things that I think about when I'm acting for, um, uh, when I'm animating acting for a, a shot for a film. Uh, you know, how does your shot fit into the film? How does it fit into the sequence? That sort of thing. Uh, lots of different things we're going to talk about. So it's going to be a full course. It's going to take me a long time to get it done. A couple of months, but be patient. We'll get it out. But uh, um, I know today was a little bit, well, it's not too short. We've been at it for an hour and 20 minutes. Wow. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I'll play this again for you. Bingo. Well, <laughs> it does sound plausible enough tonight, but why don't we wait till tomorrow? Let's wait for the common sense of the morning. So there's a couple of things in there I'm going to go in and change. I feel it's getting a little mushy, a little underwatery, slow motion feeling. So I'm going to crisp up a little bit, a little bit of it here and there. But uh, all in all, I think it's moving pretty well and 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 feeling pretty well. So, uh, like I said, I hope you guys learned something today. I hope you learned something about dialogue and acting and phrasing. Uh, and once again, until you know, I'm going to be. Uh, Tuesday, I'm going to be back on Facebook Live, and so you can catch us there at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And then next Thursday, right here again on YouTube, so we'll be doing it again. I'm not sure what we'll be doing, but we'll be doing something artistic. Something. Yep. And uh, and like I always say, go out and put some beauty back in the world. Be nice to somebody. Make someone's life better. Um, the more people that do that, the better off our lives are going to be, and I've, I'm a firm believer of that. And so um, let's go out and make the world a better place. And, uh, and you can do that through your art, too. So uh, until next week, uh, and also remember, we've got all our courses over at CreatureArtTeacher.com. 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 <laughs> yeah, and uh, so go over and check it out. Uh, I've got, plus, I've got a gallery of images you can look at and all kinds of stuff. We've got animal drawing. We've got animation. We've got character design. We've got digital painting, storyboarding, all kinds of stuff over there. So, uh, like I said, I hope you enjoyed today and um, put some beauty back in the world. And I will talk to you next week. Thanks. Dustin. Later.